Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video is going to be an update on the cliff boards for the modular ocean board set. Uh, there is a playlist that has all the videos uh, that have led up to this point. So if you want to see how I got here, um, you should check those out. And uh, if you're new uh, to the channel, welcome. Um, hopefully, especially on this video, uh, you can take something away that will help yourself um, and find of interest. So, this has been a really rough couple of weeks for me working on these. I've had some other personal issues happening, you know, that have added a little bit to my stress. Um, but, you know, mainly I have never worked so hard on something so seemingly easy and fallen so short of what I was aiming for uh, than, than has happened here on these ocean boards. Um, I'll explain what I did, what I was aiming for, what I tried, why it failed, and what my ideas are about how I would do it again if I had my druthers. Um, and I'm sure I'll try this again some point. But I'm gonna ask you, the viewers, something I've never asked in over 400 videos and over seven years of being my YouTube channel. I'm gonna request that you not make suggestions on how I could have done this. And that's the first time I've ever said that. And it's kind of important to me on this one because this really kind of wrecked me mentally. Um, the, and uh, to have a, several of you go, oh, dude, wait, if you had done it like this, if you had done it like that, it's gonna make me feel worse about how I got here. So. This really took a lot out of me. I needed to do a whole complete reboot. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video, but um, I'm just putting that request out right now. Uh, no suggestions on this one. Later, when I come up with something like this, I will look for those suggestions that you guys are so awesome about providing me. Um, but let me show you what happened and why and what my goals were, and we'll wrap this up. So here you see uh, two of the cliff boards joined and there were really uh, three goals that I had um, when I embarked upon this stage of the uh, island boards. Um, one was to have a good seam at the top and a very good seam at the ocean boards. This was a little higher than the top board. Then to have a good join at the rock faces. Um, this was the area that was the least uh, or the most difficult to control, actually. And then to have um, really nice flat polished sides between these when you were to separate them uh, apart. So let me pull these apart a little bit and I'll show you that. So here you can see, right, um, you know, the profiles of these pieces and there were some problems right from the get-go when I started to put them on. Um, this edge of all four of the pieces was actually in about five degrees, uh, maybe three. Uh, but the point being is that there was a gap on this side that uh, got wider as it got to this point. Uh, the master must not have been actually square something I'll take a look at more next time, but that meant that in order to mount them, I had to pull this edge over to get it to join with this seam here. Um, and what that did is, of course, that sort of created a little misalignment amongst the top. Plus, I cut all of them to fit over the original uh, uh, sandy beach, and that's what that is. And when I cut them, um, I, you know, I tried my best to cut them uh, to be level, but still they weren't quite level. So some of these had a, a tilt in uh, the uh, top edges or one was just a little bit higher. So that needed to be fixed also. So, what I ended up doing is I ended up, um, you know, stretching them all uh, to this point, then um, finding all of the areas that actually still bowed out. Believe it or not, areas still 
were, you know, standard proud of these edges. And I think that's because of the way the mold deformed a little bit despite my best attempt to keep it perfectly uh, flat. And in fact, some of the casts at the end, right, the mold actually starts to buckle a little bit. And so there were areas I actually had to sand in. I'm going to show you a diagram of all this in just a couple seconds here. So I had to do that. So I sanded these in, tried to fill the depressions because there were also depressions in this, tried to fill that. And I wanted this to be a nice, smooth, glossy edge that made a seamless transition to the styrene down here so that when I painted them, you wouldn't even be able to tell this was a different material. In the past, when this has been spackle, when you paint it, it absorbs the paint differently and you get a really different texture compared to the styrene and there are some ideas i have about how i could have made this attempt and still gotten that uh nice smooth transition and when we go to the um, drawing i'll show you that but um i wanted to explain it while we were looking at this here one thing i did um and i don't know if we'll be able to see it but you can use your imagination because i'm not going to do another camera angle on this one um is that i think you can see it right along the edges i actually put in strips of styrene on the corners to bring them up level with one of the boards i used one board as the master and i used strips of styrene i have a whole bunch so i could use 0.03 you know so it was like uh 0.03 you know 0.02 0.01 and then I could create a little slope that then I would fill in with um, some uh, spackle to get a nice smooth transition to join the other board and to make a very durable corner. This corner on most of these boards is rock solid and is not going to chip or deform. So there's one positive of going through this entire nightmare process. Um, and actually, it's kind of a good idea I might look into on future boards that have these kinds of exposed corners um, because it is so reinforcing. It'd be nice if everything matched up and all I had to do was run a 0.02 strip down every one. <clears throat> but that didn't happen. Um, so I'll tell you what explaining this from this angle is only satisfactory to some degree so i've done a drawing that shows this profile and what i attempted to do so let's get close up to the bench and i'll show you that uh, because this is i figured all right i'm just going to show you real quick for the styrene uh, lip and because this is all white um, i'm hoping that a there'll be enough contrast and b the uh, camera had focused right but i think i'm going to be all right um, so you can just see here right i laid down these strips of styrene um, and here it was really high so i had a thicker piece here's a slightly thinner piece right sanded for that transition here it was actually higher and uh you know back up this was a little higher this was not so you know that even this edge had variation in it that i had to manage <sighs> so anyway that's how i went to fix it um and that hopefully gives you an idea of you know why the uh, corners are going to be so strong and one of the ways that i managed that when i did that then i had to spackle the whole top to bring it up level to these edges and uh get that all aligned with the rest of the boards i feel good about the edges uh pretty good about the top corner fair about the rock edges but you'll see i'll need to come in here and do a little bit of um oh, out of frame I'll need to come in here and do a little bit of cleanup paint wise, um, but that's okay. That should be, that should be easy. <laughs> and, um, and I feel the only great, great thing was the edge on the actual bottoms of the boards that came out perfect. So anyway, there's a quick look at that. Now let's go back for the close up. I've never done this uh, before like this, uh, but um, I think it's going to work okay. And we're going to pretend it's uh, like when I was um, doing uh, middle school, uh, you know, lessons. So these are areas you can't see just yet. We're going to get to them. Um, but what I wanted to do is give you a drawing that's looking at the board. All right. So this is the rock face, right? And then this is the sharp side of the board that I'm trying to fix okay so what I've done here to try to give you a sense of what I what I did and <laughs> why it was a terrible terrible idea 
is I've um, included all the materials that I've used to try to fix them and I put them in colors so you could see the layers. Um, I used Milliput because when I tested it, plaster wouldn't bond to the plastic. I did wash the cliff pieces very well, but it, the plaster wouldn't bond from the plaster bandages, which was what I was gonna use. So I ended up using Milliput. I thinned it a lot. It's great like that, and I used that to be a bridge to the materials. So that was like a super thin layer that just went over everything pretty much that I wanted to cover. Then I thought I'd use plaster bandages to create a really strong fill. I was thinking with this big area here, you know, if there was flexing, would the spackle crack or, or you know, come off? So I thought, well, let's fill it with plaster bandages. They're rock hard when they're done. Um, but as I was using that, I realized that it's gonna take too many layers to fill. Um, and even areas that weren't that much of a depression, it really was taking a lot. So already had them down. So I changed and I went to spackle to go over that, sort of the fallback, right, option. Um, and I used it to get the filling done. And I got it done with that. But again, it's not a great uh, material to paint over and it you know still needed to get sanded smooth and all of that then as my final layer i used um, gesso and uh, that'd be that little line of blue here i got a close up in a second um, i used that as the final layer and i wanted it to do a little bit of filling on its own to get that nice smooth well it doesn't fill very well because it when it dries it contracts um, and so, no, not very good for a fill, but oh my God, is it strong and it is so hard to sand. <sighs> so that added work all on its own. And so where's the real nightmare amongst all of this? Well, when we take a look at this close up, all right, let me see here, make sure I'm in frame. All right, I think we're good here. Actually, uh, let's center it. Okay, better. We can look at the bottom half too now. So what I did, right, this is a close up. If you notice here, right, I've got the milliput and the plaster bandage and the spackle and the gesso and everything layered on top every time a material gave me a problem, I started to fill it with a new material to chase that down, and that meant I was chasing new problems as I went. Here's why. Right in this union, right here, okay, which is like right there, but there's also a similar one here, and here, and anywhere else where I had layers that were overlapping. When you sand this down, these materials are different hardnesses, so they don't sand at the same rate. So getting a smooth sand is really hard because the spackle would start to recede faster than the plaster bandages or the gesso. Or in, in just coating everything with gesso doesn't work because I'm still trying to sand it flat and that meant anywhere where it was sticking out had to come back and it would reveal one of the underlying materials. To make that even worse, the plaster bandages would have their fibers stick out because it's a it's a you know like a cotton weave right that the plaster is impregnated in, and as you sand away the plaster, all those little cotton fibers start sticking up and they don't sand away easily, so they're sticking up and now they're in the way of trying to smooth out this material. So this is why it went from a problem to a nightmare. I kept trying a new material to fix the old one and that created its own problems and none of this worked out even close to well. And to try to get it fixed, right, here's another example here. So not only was that a fill problem, but where, now this is exaggerated, hmm, texture exaggerated, where the, the cast 
was still bowed out. That meant I have to sand it back, which actually exposed the inner foam. So I had to fill that texture. And that meant that, it, say for here, right, we have a resin, gesso, milliput union, and none of those have the same hardness and sanding rates. So I'm working with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different materials in this process, right? The resin, the foam, the milliput, the gesso, the plaster bandages, and the spackle. That is too many materials, and that is too much to try to manage for sanding. I'm, I'm, I'm sad even talking about this, and I don't, this is why I say don't give me any suggestions, please, because this was a nightmare, a nightmare that I created for myself. But trying to be positive, <laughs> what would I have done in, if I were to do this again? This is what I would do. I would use gesso as the underlying material to create the bond better than the milliput easier to spread just as strong a bond shouldn't have done the milliput at all shouldn't have tried the plaster bandage instead after the gesso layer just put spackle down get everything smooth sand all your spackle smooth it's easy to sand spackle it's going to be a little tricky in a couple of the joints but not that not that hard because the spackle sands easily so you can build it up and then just bring it flush then over the whole surface, I would put another layer of gesso to get a nice smooth top. And then I would gloss coat it to bring it into the same kind of, you know, uh, finish quality to the styrene. And then it would paint well. I'm probably gonna give them all a gloss clear coat before I paint them anyway. It's two seconds to do that. So it's no, no effort and I think it's gonna work out well. But. I wanted to give you that close up look so you can avoid ever doing what I did. Please don't ever do this. It will make me even sadder to hear that somebody else went through this problem. Last thought real quick, um, here you can see the top and here just to show you again, here's the styrene strips. Um, and in fact, on some of the boards, I had to put them on the horizontal uh, uh, edge as well, uh, or the vertical edge, I'm sorry, um, because of deformations in that. I'm not even going to talk more about it. Um, but then, you know, I uh, spread the uh, spackle um, on the top here, and that's what this represents here. So, so that gives you a look at the uh, situation and how it was sort of resolved. Um, and, you know, the reason why I'm asking for you to abstain from suggestions is that this really did sort of make me feel... A, a little down, you know, don't, don't worry. It wasn't like a catastrophic, you know, mental cascade, but it, you know, it really did set me back in a way that I haven't felt uh, doing projects in, before. And so, um, you know, the way I helped resolve that a little bit for myself was actually taking a couple days back. And then um, whenever I feel like I can't focus or I need sort of a reboot, I clean my environment and I cleaned the studio in a way that it hasn't been done since maybe I started. I vacuumed every surface. I vacuumed the rafters. Dust control. You don't always control at all. And I don't want 15 years of dust on the ceiling. So I vacuumed every surface. Then I was going to shoot this video and then I thought, I have the paint for the floor. I've been wanting to paint it, haven't done that. And I said, why not? We're going to do the whole thing. So I painted the whole floor. It looks beautiful in here now, but that was another day out of the uh, studio because it had to dry, it's oil based. And so I've had some time to step back and um, that has been very restorative actually. And, you know, I've learned a lot of things during this. Um, so this is sort of the non-project, more like me being Terranscapes. Um, you know, I learned to how I need to work on managing my expectations. I did learn quite a bit about the materials that I was using. Um, I also learned that I put a lot of time into this and part of my problem lately has been managing where my time is going. And I won't get into the details on that, but I've been trying to track some of the slices of it a little bit better. And um, this even um, has sort of 
pushed me onto managing things uh, time-wise a little bit more, with a little more granularity. So I'm really trying to get a focus on that. Um, and um, you know, it's it highlights one of the challenges of doing, you know, independent work, being your own business. Um, I don't have a boss that says, "What are you doing? Why are you still working on that?" You know, I don't have that. Um, I don't have a boss that says, "How many hours are you spending over here?" Y you don't make money there, right? Um, so, you know, it's all about, I have to be aware of all of these things and uh, changes are gradual and that means that sometimes you don't notice them. So it's been a good eye-opening experience and um, I have learned a lot and I'm always learning. And uh, I hope some of this has helped you learn as well. And uh, I hope you come back to learn more with me. Uh, because you know I will be back soon with another Terrence Gabes video. You know, I think... Oh, I should probably get out of the way of the lights. There we go. Um, but I think this is... Gonna, okay, here we go. Get out of the way of the lights, Mike. Ready? Are we ready? Can we start this? Okay. Three, two... Unbelievable. Who are all these people calling me? I, who are these people calling me? I don't know anybody in North Adams. I don't think so. I certainly don't want to talk to anybody in Miami. But I have to have the phone near me because I have a friend that might call with an important thing. Hmm? Ah, maybe we can try this again. Second time there was a phone interruption. Okay, we're going to try it again. Help hone my... Too much for the outro. Too much. Try it again, Mike. <laughs>